All right, hello. Welcome to the Hold My Helmet Football Podcast. I'm your host, Will Reichling. And I'm your host, Dylan Boyle. Welcome back, Dylan. How was your Christmas? How'd it go, man? My Christmas is good, man. You can't ask for anything better, you know? Not- Football, food, family. The I- only thing is, it's like, you know, a lot of football is going on. You're trying to spend time with your family, kind of tuning in, tuning out. You it was too. It was too much. Well, honestly, yeah, it was. It was, it was too much. Like, on Christmas Eve, to have a whole slate of football games, it was a little crazy. I'm not it gonna was. lie. Uh, thank God I didn't do all the traveling that I usually do on Christmas Eve. I, I took it easy this year, but it, it's it's hard to focus on every game, especially mm-hmm. you know some games like the one o'clock window. You have like set. What was it? Six, seven games going on. I was yeah. a little crazy. And there. that's usually when family's there. You know, you got stuff yeah. going on. You I haven't was- seen the uncle you haven't seen in like five years. Is yeah. asking what you do for a living now, and you're trying to explain it to him while also trying to watch uh, Russell Wilson and the Broncos lose to the Patriots. Yeah, but- <laughs> yeah I, I was playing board games and I had the game in the corners. I was like half watching, half playing. <laughs> like, what are you doing? stuff to do oh you had the phone action going on in the corner yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's usually rough everyone thinks you're a psychopath because because uh the, the non-football fans kind of look at you a little crazy yeah, so on this us, time of the year us football fanatics are a bit bit much sometimes. football fans get it though you know you get the phone in the corner you're looking at the game as you're looking back and forth i, I used to work at fox we, we used both used to work at the catering hall and i remember a guy was like at the wedding like watching on his phone the game on his phone and i think it was like it might have been when the Giants were in the playoffs, actually. I think it was the like really? Giants-Packers in the playoffs in, like, 2016. And he was watching on his phone. I remember talking to him about it because the Giants were losing at the time. Anyway, regardless, it's a fun time. It's over with now. We're going to have New Year's Eve next weekend. On Sunday, I think, is New Year's yeah, Eve. Same situation. <laughs> yeah, very similar. But I think they only have they have one Saturday game, you said. And they have a whole slate on New Year's Eve. And then uh-huh. Sunday, they have just one. No, they don't have a, uh, they don't have a Monday game. They don't have a New yeah, Year's Day Yeah, they don't game. have a Monday game, which is pretty weird. Which is weird, but it's New Year's Day. So I guess that kind of makes sense. But anyway, moving on. We'll start with the most important game that happened this week, and that was on the Monday night game on Christmas Day. Uh-huh. The Ravens, 49ers. And what I'm just, I'm kind of surprised. I didn't, I, I didn't think that the Ravens were going to control the game the way they did. It was a little surprising, the four picks mm-hmm. by Brock Purdy. And I think that first interception in the red zone on the first drive set the tone for the rest of the game. You know, it was just a turnover machine from Brock Purdy this game. Exactly. I completely agree with that. Like, the first turnover, you could tell it was kind of his fault. Second one was um, a, a deflection that uh, somebody else caught. Yeah, and that was kind of unfair because it was a flag was called during that play, and I was under the impression, oh, it's a free play, but apparently it was like a holding on Christian. Yeah, Catholic. yeah, right. So I, I don't know. That one was a little weird. That was the, iffy. There was one where he was rolling right and then threw it back to his left. That was a little stupid. But I think yeah, that was the one I was gonna talk. So, yeah, but yeah, that, that one, one was. I guess he thought it was a free play, but at the same time, he kind of like threw it across his body, and that's a big no no. Mm-hmm. And then there was the other one that was, that was deflected. It looked like it was behind, but it was actually deflected. Yeah. So it was a rough one. It was, it definitely... was a rough game for the 49ers, I will say. But I think they needed a loss like this, you know, to kind of put them in their place, to let them know they're not, you know, running the NFL right now. They do have some flaws. You know, Brock Purdy isn't carrying this team. They, you know, this is a quarterback. This is a type of game where the quarterback kind of showed out and you could tell like quarterbacks run the game you know yeah exactly and i've talked about this before like i thought brock Purdy was the favorite to win mvp going into this week but i thought well lamar jackson is the most valuable player in the league like sure. what would where would the ravens be right now without lamar jackson and he showed it this game this the different two differences in this game were the turnovers by brock Purdy mm-hmm. and lamar jackson making plays with his feet running the ball throwing out of the pocket yeah. the 49ers could not get to lamar they tried and tried and tried and he was just running around running around running around making a throw run around run around make a throw run around huge run like he just constantly was making plays with his feet mm-hmm. and he's really it's like he's playing chess out there he really has learned how to play the quarterback position yeah for sure he, Absolutely. he looks great out there it doesn't always come up in the stat sheet but he had a great game statistically in this game and lamar controlled this game again yeah his football iq is through the roof really is like he knows when to sit in the pocket let, let the play develop and let it go or when you know it's just not there and he can take off and that's just He's like the ideal quarterback that you want. You know, he, he's very mobile. One of the, I think he's the most mobile quarterback in the NFL right history, now. History, maybe. History. Yeah. Maybe. Eh, Michael Vick. Him, that's Michael the Vick. argument's him Cam and Michael Newton's Vick. Up there. Cam. Cam's a big one. Yes, yeah. he is. But he's just, like I said, his IQ football is just through the roof. He, he just knows when to do things at the moment they want. And this isn't a team where, like, they have a, a stacked roster like the 49 No, they have injuries everywhere. Mark yeah. Andrews is out for the year. They're, they have two running backs out yeah. for the year. Yeah, and, and they're still getting – they 
they're getting the running game done. Yep. They, whether it's with Lamar or Gus Edwards, Justice Hill. Yeah, they, yeah. they get it done. Yep. You know they they're a very well coached team and they have a great quarterback and I feel like that's really all you need in this league. You answer. You hit the nail right on the head there. They don't have the most staff roster because they have injuries everywhere, mm-hmm. and you know they have two running backs out for the season. Their best, their best tight receiving, end, their yeah. best, one of the best receiving tight ends in the league out for the season. Even though Isaiah likely looks very promising, still he, he does big yeah. big pieces all out. The, the, all the odds stacked against them. They had a, a, in some injuries on the line in the beginning of the season. Not a problem. So exactly, we'll walk, and you know? Bro- and Brock Purdy, when the slightest thing goes wrong, it's t- it seems like he tends to struggle. I still think Brock Purdy is a good, yeah. a really good quarterback. He's gonna have a bad game. It happened. It just happened to happen on the biggest stage of the season for him. Yeah. So very unfortunate Listen, for that. I, I would I would take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, this um, Niners are still the best team in the NFC. Yes, yeah, th- they definitely are. Um, but like I said, they needed a game like this, especially Brock Purdy. Like I don't know, he went out in like what the third quarter to injury. What what was that? Uh, so, well, he got cleared to come back in, but I think Shanahan kind of said, you know what, you're getting we're down three scores. Yeah. Just hit the rest of the game. That same with Trent Williams. Trent Williams uh, came out early, their left tackle, and then he was kind of paced around. I just think Shanahan knew the game was over. Save him for another day. Like yeah. Well, listen, like the 49ers are still they still clutch playoffs. I'm pretty sure they're gonna clutch um, the the first seed. So yeah, they're know, gonna get the first. Give seed. it to them. Let them, you know, go back in the playbook. Look, go back in the footage. See what they did wrong, and really work on it. Um, it really all comes down to Brock Purdy, though. At the end of the day, right. And if they meet in the Super Bowl again, it could happen. Who will win? Would the Ravens win again, or do you think the Niners would bounce back? I mean, we could still have a lot of football. I left. feel like it would be a lot closer game. I thought it was going to be close. This game was going to be close. I know. I thought yeah. so, too. So. But you never know. You know, they played them once. They got some footage on them. They know what they're going to That's true. You know, Le- Lamar is uh, able to contain Lamar a little more. Well, that's the thing. Lamar is 20-1 against NFC teams. It seems like when an NFC team faces Lamar for the first time, they're, like, confused. They're yeah. like, what's going on? Yeah. I don't think Lamar has ever faced the Niners before this. He might have. But now he's 20-1 against NFC teams. They just can't figure him out. And no, the one loss can't. was to who? The one loss to the NFC team. Last year, I'll give you a hint. Last year, you're a fan of the team. Oh, the, <laughs> the Giants? Giants beat Lamar last oh, okay. year. Yeah, fun fact. The fun, only NFC team to beat fact. Lamar as a starter. Very fun fact. But yeah, I still think the Niners are the best team in the NFC. Mm-hmm. As far as the Ravens, this is their. They have to make it to the Super Bowl. Like this is everything's falling apart around them. They yes. are the best team in the league right now. Yeah, I think the sure. Niners have the best roster, but Lamar is a difference maker at quarterback. So yes. and the AFC is really up and wide there. open. Wide so, open. Well, two weeks left. Um, and then playoffs start. So Lamar now it just comes down to what do you do in the playoffs? You beat the good teams in the regular season. You know, you beat the Lions. Uh, you beat well. They play the Dolphins, I think, soon. But you beat the uh Forty Niners. They've, they, they've shown it they in the record. Yeah. yeah. Now he's got to prove in the playoffs. Yeah. But moving Very, on to the second yeah. biggest game, just brought up the Dolphins, and we brought up the Cowboys a little while ago. Dolphin Cowboys, and you picked the Dolphins, right? And I picked yes, the Cowboys, and you got me on this one. Miami impressed me. Look, they were able to beat a good team. I know people are still down on like, oh, you beat one good team while you were home, and it's Dallas, and Dallas is frauds. Miami played good in this game. Their defense has really impressed me. It was first and goal right inside the five, right before uh, the, the end of the first half, and Tua was in shock, and Raheem Mostert was to the left of him. Raheem Mostert went in motion right behind Tua, and then once the ball was snapped, Mostert cut right back left and right in between the one hole, right in between the guard and the left, the yeah, left yeah. guard and the center, and it did a little out to the left. It was wide open. Boom, touchdown. Those G- those smart play calls, the misdirections, the deceptions, plays, the, he's great at that. That was a great play call, and that's why Mike McDaniel is a great head coach. He's a difference maker. He makes smart play calls that get you into the end zone, and what was like two was good in this game he actually had a pretty solid game and you know dallas i don't take too much I, like i'm not ready to sell my stock on dallas but mm-hmm. they did they were a little funky in offense to, on that game it was a, they did struggle i mean honestly all i saw out there from dallas is cd lamb going completely off and listen yeah i'll give it to them they got one of the best receivers but after that who else do you have that's a good I mean, point tony pollard He's really kind of been irrelevant. He's been the most disappointing part of this team this season. Very. And I, I feel like with any good team, if you go back to any good teams that you thought of, they have a great running game. Yeah. Got a yes. The great Niners, running great game. running game. Yes. Ravens, great running game. Exactly. And that's the key piece that you're missing here. I mean, yeah, you got some you got some targets on offense. You know, Brandon's Cooks could go off sometimes. But, you know, you know, Jake Ferguson is definitely coming off on as a really good uh, yeah, tight end. Yeah, he's coming on as a star tight end. But when those things, you know, it is too Dak, C.D. Lamb, or Lions still. It is, for sure. And, you know, if you don't have a good good running game, it just all goes down to play calling too, you know. Uh, McCarthy is his first year calling plays, so I feel like they still need, 
You still need to get some of the rust off, you know. And they've had success for the most part. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not ready to sell my stock completely on them. Uh, it it was a tough game, and you were on the road here. I don't know. I, I'm not ready to sell my stock completely. I'm, I'm kind of there though, because I, I said this last <laughs> week. You know, it's like every other week. You know, you see a really good deck, and then you see a really crappy deck. And Look, I'm I don't disagree. <laughs> I don't you have disagree. To be consistent. You know, you're you're going. You're three games in the playoff. So they're not they're not getting uh, by. So they're gonna have a wild card, the divisional round, and then the the conference. Right. And I really don't think they win maybe one of those games, but conference round, I think they're gonna get eliminated. Hmm. Well, the thing is, is that. I like. I still think Dallas is better than Miami, and I think if they played again, I feel like Dallas would win. It just was weird this game. Like that first drive, they get they drive all the way down the field and they hand off to a fullback and he fumbles. The first drive, yeah, that, that, that set the again set, set the tone set for the, the game. Tone, yeah. yeah, and it was still it came down to the wire. These are two like pretty. It's weird. Like the Dolphins, I always felt like were the AFC version of the Cowboys. They like choked the good teams and stuff, beat up on the bad teams. So it was kind of funny seeing them play each yeah, other. And it was close. You know? <laughs> it was like the Spider-Man memes going back and forth yeah. at each other. In a way, it's just kind of... But For sure. And But the only thing I am worried about with uh, the Dolphins, they're missing Waddle now. I don't know how long he's going to be out. I know, yeah. But, so can Ty- Tyreek Hill really take all that pressure? Well, he's been banged up too. That's what I was doing about it. That's what I was kind of going to. You know, mm. I don't know if he could really... Do you know if Waddle's out long term? He's, I don't know. he's probably he's probably uh, limited. I don't know because I remember that he got hurt and they both kind of been banged up a little bit this year. Wallace had some games where he was injured, but great win for the Dolphins. You know yeah. the the defense is really coming on the pass rush yes, that back end sure. with Ramsey and Howard. They're a playoff team for sure, and like the AC is keep, wide open. They so. can keep things together, you know, keep the injuries limited, get some of your key players back. I think they could really make some noise in the playoffs. But it's all about if you're going to have those players. Are you it's all about health. To, uh, have, yeah. yeah. That's all it's, it's all it's ever been with Dolphins. Health. Like, Tua last season going down. Mm-hmm. You need both those receivers because that's what makes you, like, the difference team. Yeah, you don't know who to cover at yeah, that point. That, like, and, if you just have one of them, it's like, yeah, Tyreek Hill's special. But when you're, your number two is, like, Cedric Wilson and your tight ends, well, what, Durham Smythe? Mm-hmm. I heard his name called a lot in the last game. Anyway, I, the AFC is wide open, so you never know. But, like, yeah. I... I can see the Browns beating the Dolphins in the playoffs. Can you not? We'll get into the Browns sure, later, but sure. like I'm liking the Browns, man. The yeah. AFC. We'll get to that though. I know you're very high on the Browns too. Speaking of an AFC team that we're not high on, the Jags getting their butts kicked by the Bucks, completely demolished, man. And you went with the Jags here. I went with the Bucks. I just had a mm-hmm. feeling the Bucks were like riding high on momentum, and the Jags are just. I don't know if Trevor Lawrence is playing hurt. I mean, he came out with the shoulder injury again yeah. late in the game. But he just has not – are we ready to say that he's just been, like, underwhelming? He has not – he's been overhyped as a number one overall pick. He Absolutely. just hasn't played to, like, what we thought he was going to be. Is he good? Yes. But, like, it's just he, not enough. He kind of seems average, you know. You know, you don't see those uh, – those wow plays from him anymore. No, you, you don't. don't see anything like he doesn't bring anything to the table that like like Lamar. What does he do, do different than everyone else? His running ability. Running Mahomes. Game. What is his difference maker? His just his made, arm. Yeah, the great three. Yeah. Burrow. What is his pocket presence? The coolness. The calm collectiveness. Every special quarterback has like their thing. What's Trevor Lawrence's thing? I couldn't tell you exactly. He's like well rounded at everything. Well, I'll give yes. him that. And he does make a, a couple of really good throws. You're like, oh, that was a nice throw down the field. He makes mistakes too. The like turnovers. Every, every off yeah. average quarterback. Back, the f- exactly. The fumbling. Exactly. Like a lot. Ex- you perfect example. All like backups, average quarterbacks. They can make explosive plays. Look at Darnold. He made a ton of explosive plays. But it's the turnovers, yeah. the inconsistency, which is what Baker had. But Baker. But Baker's turning a leaf. He. This might be his best season in the NFL. Baker. Oh, for sure. They're you eight know. and seven. He had the last couple of games. He's been on fire. Baker is really taking control of uh, this system, and you gotta like it, man. I mean, we've been we've been Baker haters, I guess, but not really haters. We just we saw him for what it was. He shouldn't have been the number one overall pick. He's mm-hmm. a good player. He's not elite, and that's exactly what he's been here. But when you got Mike Evans, Godwin, and you have a good defense. And Rashad White, you're going to be somewhat successful. I mean, he, he was making plays out there. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, he could definitely be a starting quarterback in this league. Yes, that, tight, that touchdown throw to Mike Evans on that post that was like oh, double yeah. He can make some big time plays, Baker Mayfield. He he, he is a first round pick talent. Mm-hmm. And, and Number one overall pick? I don't know about that. I've always liked him being mobile and being aggressive. Like, he's taking not hits. A, not afraid to go in. And Low in his shoulder. Yes. Sometimes it's a little. I like. I always like that too in a quarterback, though. When he could be like just one of the guys, mm-hmm. hit you like 
like a linebacker. I know you don't want him getting hurt, but I love the toughness. Josh Allen does that too. Yeah. But Baker's got this team in prime position to win their division. And even if they didn't win the division, they probably would be a wild card team. This they is would, not yeah. like a crappy NFC South team. This is a pretty solid team. It's not yeah. great, but it's it's solid. Yeah, I have them winning their division. So do I. Yeah. So do I. And I, I don't think it's really a question of that anymore. It's just a question now of do they bring back Baker? I would yeah. give him another year, two-year deal. Small. Yeah. Don't make it too big. Mm-hmm. But maybe draft the quarterback in the first, second round. Bring Baker back. You're a playoff team, so I mean they're I mean, not going to yeah. They're not going to be finishing too high in the draft, though. So that's the thing. You 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 go in on a guy that you're not completely sold on. Um, maybe they go. Maybe they're like completely sold on Baker now. I mean, he he's had some games where it was like iffy. It's not like he's had like a wow season. We've had mm-hmm. games that we've covered with him where we were underwhelmed. So it's yeah. I mean that that is Baker, you know. You know, some weeks <laughs> yeah. he, he brings it, some yeah. weeks he doesn't. He's inconsistent. Like, he hasn't had a, like a terrible game where I was like, okay, I, I'm kind of sold on him. You know? No, no. And he hasn't had like a wow game where I'm like, I, I'm all in on Baker. I mean, he had that perfect pa- perfect passer rating game. Too, I think against the Packers two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. But it's the Packers. They have a lot of injuries and on defense. And mm-hmm. but as, I, I, I need to see what they do in playoffs. That'll be really my. They might be a one and done though because. Well, who would they play? They're the four. They'll probably play the Cowboys or the Eagles. So that will be tough in the first round. That's going to be tough. But they'll be home. Both those teams are kind of throw. I can see them <laughs> being the Eagles. Yeah, hundred percent. Maybe Dallas might be too talented, but the Eagles, they're secondary. Swiss yeah, cheese. Yeah, exactly. Mike Evans would be <laughs> annihilating them. That might be interesting to watch out for. So that, we might want to keep an eye. Game, yeah. We might want to keep an eye on who loses the NFC East because then they get the five seed and they play the Bucks. So we might want to keep an eye on that. Lions at Vikings and. I know you kind of you kind of like Nick Mullins a little bit. Not like you like him, but you think he's very, more than capable. I think he's capable, sure. too. Yeah. He can get the ball down the field. We saw a lot of big explosive plays with Justin Jefferson. But he turns the, he's a walking turnover, man. He, he is. He, I will he, give it he to throws you. way too many interceptions. He had two critical ones again in this game. But I think the main story of this is the Lions win their division for the first time since 1993. 30 years, the Detroit Lions have went without... Uh, winning the NFC South, and they finally have. So, congrats. I know the Lions fans have went through a lot of struggles over the years. You know, they haven't been successful at all, really. They probably have been the lo- biggest laughing stock other than the Browns and yeah. the Jets. Only a couple years ago, they went. Um, I went 16. Uh, yeah, 16. Yeah, it wasn't so too they, long they ago. They had that yeah. big burden on their shoulder, so. Yeah, this is definitely big for them. They had Dan Orlovsky running out the back that same year, running out the back of the end zone, looking down the field. Yeah, they've had some embarrassing moments. But then again, you also have players like Barry Sanders. So like, you have good moments and bad moments as a franchise. Even when you have the lows of the lows, you're still... I'm pretty sure that's the last time they won the divisions when they had Barry Sanders. So uh-huh. they're throwing it back. But... Look, Dan Campbell's a great head coach. We all laughed at him when he first stepped on the podium and he was talking about biting kneecaps off, but he's really turned into a smarter guy than we thought. We kind of all thought he was like a little bit of a meathead. And maybe he does have a little meathead quality. Maybe that's what you want. Your, your maybe that's what you want. Look at Antonio Pierce. I don't want to call him a meathead for the Raiders, but he's got them fired up. Absolutely. Like, Dan Campbell gets his players fired up, and they play hard for him, and he's got the lines on top of their division. And... What a what a job! Do you think he wins Coach of the Year? Because just I know you have so many other candidates. You got Stefanski bringing Flacco to the playoffs on the Browns. You got you had D'Amico Ryan's, and if the Texans went make the playoffs, you have McVay with like no talent going to the playoffs with the Rams possibly. But here you got the Lions, who haven't been relevant in like thirty years, finally winning their division. Do you Dan Campbell turning this culture around in two three years? Two three years ago, they were one of the worst teams in the league. Do you put Dan Campbell in that mix? Yeah, definitely like top five. Would he be? Sure. Would you have him winning? Who Who do you have right now? Let's get back to this conversation again. Probably McVay. McVay. Yeah. McVay. I would. I gotta agree, McVay right now. Unless D'Amico, if D'Amico Ryan's can get into the playoffs, I'll put D'Amico Ryan's. But if not, I'll go McVay. Stefan, it's tough though because Stefanski would probably be two or three. Yeah, uh, it's tough, yeah. man, because the Browns too. It just matters four how quarterbacks. They all, they all yeah, because Stefanski's have four quarterbacks. On the Browns, and they won ten games. That's that's there's something to be said about that fly running around. But there's something yeah, to be so said about that. And look, I guess it's going to come down to the wire because we've talked about it a few weeks ago. There's a lot of different candidates, so mm-hmm. let's just move on. I mean, congrats, but uh, congrats Vikings. Not not congrats Vikings. You guys actually might miss out on the playoffs now. We'll get into the wild card picture in a little bit, but congrats, Lions. You deserve it. Browns at Texans, and we were just talking about Joe Flacco on the Browns. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about Amari Cooper because, boy, have I been telling you that he's a wide receiver one, and yeah. he showed it in this game. He did. Times five. The Absolutely. guy is amazing, man. 220-something receiving yards. 260, I think. 260. He wants to be like 262. That yeah. Freaking phenomenal. I know you man. wanted the carries like, there. I did too because it's just, that's, wow. That's, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there, he really didn't, I don't know, going into this year, you didn't really think if he still had it, but he really showed it here. 
And, you know, I don't know. Kudos to, to Joe Flacco, yes. man. Because he's, he's, you know, we ca- he came into this year and we didn't really know if he was going to perform like he would, if he was going to show what he showed on the Jets or if he was going to step up. But, man, he's he's been showing it. See, like, the- a few mistakes, but... I- you can't really blame him on that. Yeah, like he's had a couple picks, but when he's making big plays down the field, like I you I I was listening to you watch the highlights the other day, and all I heard is, and again Amari Cooper, and Amari Cooper again. It was just like over and over and over. It's like oh my god, he couldn't stop him. But yeah, Joe Flag was on the street like two like what like four or five weeks ago, and now yeah. he's bringing a team to the playoffs. And Dylan, there's three teams that could possibly get the one seed in the AFC. Like everyone else is mathematically eliminated from the one seed. The Ravens. The Dolphins and the Browns. <laughs> Those three teams can still get the one seed. And Njoku is really finally coming into what we all thought he was going to be as a tight end. It took him a couple of years. You know, he had Austin Hooper starting over him and he had some injuries. You know, he had the burns all in the year. He's really come on. And Amar Cooper, all I have been saying is you need to get a quarterback, a quarterback for him and he's going to put up numbers. He did not on the Raiders. He did in Dallas. And this is the only question I have left after this game and really for the Browns moving forward. Do you have a quarterback controversy in your hand? Because in my opinion, Joe Flacco runs this offense better than Deshaun Watson. But you paid him all this guaranteed money, and he's not going anywhere. So do you have a legitimate controversy after the season? Very good point. I think you really do. I do. I agree. Because, you know, if Joe Flacco, Joe Schmo can get this done. Pretty much. (laughs) You know, and... You know, when uh, Deshaun Watson was in there, he really wasn't looking convincing. It was shaky. It His was last game shaky. was promising, but it was very, very, very shaky. The, yeah, so... The, you, they were not slinging the ball like this. They were not slinging the ball like this, so... If you can Yikes. salvage <laughs> anything from him and try to get any sort of deal going, I think they do that. I don't think and you I can, think, because it's all guaranteed money, that which no one wants to pay him. So, you, you're not, you it's not looking good. The, probably just bite the bullet. It depends what they do here. If they win a Super Bowl, then <laughs> screw it. You know, I, well, I'm sure the owner wouldn't mind t- 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 taking that... Um, that, that, that omen, yeah. yeah. Look, i got to be honest. I don't think that's off the table right now because the AFC is so wide open. They've beaten a lot of good teams. They beat the Niners. They beat the Ravens. They, I feel like they would beat the Chiefs. You know, like, they have beaten a lot of legitimate teams. Like, this this team is legit. They, like, they have a crazy good defense right now, and that alone, you know, the offense really isn't required to do that much. But right putting now. up, what do they put up, like 30 something, what, 36 points? When exactly. they're putting up 36. <laughs> but exactly. When you have an uh, offense that is firing in all, all cylinders, you have the best defense in the league. How can you not say, like, they're – they're going to the Super Bowl. They they have they have a shot. I think they do have a legitimate shot at making this AFC Championship game. But now speaking of the Watt like the playoffs and everything, because the Texans too, they might be missing out. Uh, right now, the wild card. Let's get into that right now. Well, actually, I have the whole standings here for the AFC. We got the Ravens at number one, 12 and three. I think they'll finish with the one seed. Dolphins in the second seed at eleven and four. Chiefs at the third seed, nine and six. You got the Jaguars barely hanging on with the four seed at eight and seven right now. Then at the five seed, you got the Browns at ten and five. The Bills at the six seed at nine and six. The Colts at the seven seed at eight and seven. And then just in the hunt, you got the Texans at the eight seed at eight and seven. The Steelers at the nine seed at eight and seven. And the Bengals at the ten seed at eight and seven. So who do you think makes that wild card, the five, six, and seven seed? So I think the the Jaguars, they're actually going to be in the wild card, and I think the Texans are going to step up and take So you think the, the Texans division. win the AFC yes. South and the yes. Jaguars choke and slip out of the AFC yes. South? Yes, I think they'll still make the playoffs, but... Maybe by the seventh seed, you know. So you have okay. So you have the Jaguars in seventh seed, Texans at the four seed. What else? Um, Do you have the Chiefs winning another division still? Y- yes. Okay. 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 Just okay. by a sliver. Though. So we still got Ravens one, Dolphins two, Chiefs three, mm-hmm. Texans four, Texans three. Texans probably finish four, I think. Texans will. The Chiefs finish. are close too, but okay. Let's put Texans four, Browns five. Browns probably five. Okay, yeah. Browns five, and you got Jaguars. You said seven. So who you got six? The Bills still. Yeah. Okay, so the only difference, you have the Texans in, the Colts out, and then the Texans and Jaguars swapped. Okay. Yeah. So now I will keep it the same. I'll have Ravens 1. Well, not the same everything, but the same at the top. Ravens 1. We'll go Dolphins 2, Chiefs 3. I'm going to have the Jaguars barely holding on. Barely, but holding on to the division. So Jaguars stay 4. I got the Browns sticking with 5. The Bills sticking with 6. I got the Texans getting the 7th seed. So we both got the Texans and the Colts out. I think... I think the Texans, well, they play each other week 18. So we got yeah, the Texans and the Colts playing each other week 18. I think the Colts are going to lose this week. I forgot who they play, but I think they picked the, uh, I think I picked the Colts to lose this week. And I got the, I got the Texans beating the Titans this week. So 
I got the Texans beating the Titans. I got the Colts losing. And I got the Texans beating the Colts the next week. So I got the Texans in, Colts out. You got the Texans, Colts out. But you think the Texans are going to win the division. I think the Jacks yes. are. Regardless, we got the same playoff picture for that. So we'll move on with that. We'll only go in that, to that for a little bit. So we'll get the Raiders, Chiefs, and look, I don't know how many times we're going to beat this dead horse. The Chiefs just aren't the same. I mean, what else can we really say about that? I mean, do you got anything to add to that? Because it's, just, it's nah, been... A, there's really nothing else to get into here. Um... You know, they just Mahomes is doing everything he possibly can, but his just receivers are right there. You don't have that that really wow receiver. You did have him, you don't anymore. So um, Travis Kelsey is just getting too old. He can't. You can't put all the pressure on him. You still have developing receivers, so you can't really expect much from them either. So I I really don't know what the Chiefs are gonna do. You you really need to either find someone in the draft or you gotta. Draft someone good, you know. I think the only thing to add to this game is not even on the Chiefs side because I've beaten this for a couple of weeks that the Chiefs just aren't the same. They could they could either squeak somehow to the AFC Championship a game off off defense and running or be knocked out in the first round. So I don't really know what to go with there. I think that I think they're just gonna have to recoup next year and this year's kind of a wash for them. Yeah. As far as the Raiders. They gotta make Antonio Pierce their guy. He is shown they they can still win their division against. They can still beat up the Chiefs somehow. I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think they make the playoffs. But they're seven and eight. We were saying they were a disaster a few yes. weeks ago. So and listen, what a job! What a job! Really, I think he could be a smart coach, man. I think absolutely. So you know, I, he's completely turned this team around. One hundred percent. So and they they like I said, uh, like Dan Campbell, they want to play for him, and they beat the Chiefs. They beat the Chiefs. Um, didn't they beat the Broncos a few weeks ago? They be, well, they beat the Broncos week one too, but they beat they be, they've beaten a couple teams since he's became yeah. a head coach. I think it's like three and two, four and two. Giants. They beat the Giants. I mean that one, yeah. They beat the Jets. They, <laughs> they beat, beat the, the Jets, Jets too. The, the back week, to back uh, yeah, I think it was the back to back. Yeah. Yes, but let's move on. So we got Bengals, Steelers, and the Steelers actually gave us a pretty impressive performance on offense. Mason Rudolph and George Pickens. If this could be his coming out game, George Pickens. He's had a lot of weeks in a row. He was complaining, you know, the, the, the social media nonsense, people saying that he was he wasn't committed, and coming out with the game of his life. If he could put this together, and maybe this is the turning point of him getting over the hump and becoming an elite receiver in the league because he's great, but he hasn't been a top ten guy yet. Can yeah. he get to that level now? I don't know what's what it is about the Steelers organizations where they have savvy wide receivers. They draft good at yeah, wide receiver Antonio do. Brown, yeah, Deontay and so, Johnson. Absolutely, yeah. but you know they all have you know controversy. You know. Um, They're all talented, though. They, I will say they, that. Yes. Claypool, they just yeah. traded. He was a head case. Not yeah. a head case, but yeah, they all have like weird social media things going on. Smith Schuster was a TikTok guy. Yeah, what is up with that? that I don't point. know. It, it's just <laughs> something about the Steelers. But listen, you know, George Pickens is, is one of those elite guys that, you know, you see something special from him. He was he was getting open all night. Phenomenal. Yeah. You know, just He just has good route making, and he had he just. And, and for this backup, what, um, what is it? Matt Mason Rudolph, Mason yeah. Rudolph. He's been there for a few years, and he sucked a couple of years ago. They want, they were calling for him to be benched, and now they're chanting his name. It's funny how things could change. <laughs> yes, but it, it's crazy because this offense is still the same offense that Kenny Pickett had. Yeah. And they, they, this is their first game that they scored over 30 points. Yeah. So, yeah. And it wasn't all the defense because no. we're usually saying, you know, it was just a de- no, defense. No, Mason game. Rudolph was making big plays to George was, Pickens. Yes. And the thing was, George Pickens, we've been saying for a long time now, even last year, he gets open a lot and he just doesn't get the ball. Yeah. And we were saying, this guy's talented. He's got great hands. We've seen him make some wow catches. Phenomenal catches. Yes. Yeah. And we were saying, he hasn't put it together. He hasn't been putting up the numbers yet. This is what we've been waiting for a monster game from him where he just completely just. Un- he was controlled. Like, I've never seen him, like, dominate to that level. And maybe he's finally. Turn the corner. Here. Yeah, he's definitely the number one receiver. Like yes, De- 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 Johnson. There was questions there, who was but... out, who was the one, and I think Pickens has emerged as the one. But that's what I'm saying. You have a nice wide receiver. You have like a one A one B situation. Exactly, yeah. and you you got good running back. Yes, I mean Najee Harris is old, getting older, and he he he's playing. Well, like he's here's older, the thing: but... a combination of Najee Harris, ground and pound, and Jalen Warren, speedster. It gives you kind of like a Dallas last year Zeke Pollard thing going on, yeah, exactly. and it's like that's not a bad combination. So to you have. have everything you want to see in the Steelers team i feel like it really just lands on the quarterback spot yes you have a great defense you know you yeah know. you're always gonna have a great defense with yeah. tj watt back there and mm-hmm. fitzpatrick it really comes down to the offense and they have players i'm not even saying offense i'm just saying quarterback yeah, that, yeah. that's really all yeah. it comes down to yeah 
Because they have the tight end, they have the receivers, they have the running backs. So exactly. Really, so let's see if Kenny Pickett can put it back together when Cause he comes he's, back. Because they're going to put him back in because like, that's their guy right now. I mean, if if he plays bad again, they're going to be screaming for Mason Rudolph. So yeah. he's going to be – he's got to be careful. But we'll get into Saints-Rams now. and th- I know the Saints – the Saints have a quality of making it interesting late. But we all know that it, the Rams controlled this game entirely. Is that yes. the final score was thirty twenty two? But wasn't it like thirty to seven? Like the Rams controlled this game. Yeah. No, it was only the last drive. that yeah. they tried to put it back exactly. Together. They the, did the onside kick. Right, the Rams con- the Rams controlled this game top to like beginning to end. And the I, I don't know the Saints have just been disappointing all season. We don't trust the head coach. You know they don't produce enough on offense until they're trailing late. Mm-hmm. And it's really more about the Rams and how Sean McVay has really got this roster and this offense pretty dangerous and like. Look, Puka, Cooper Cup, those two right there, that's like pretty dangerous one-two combination. Kyron Williams. Mm-hmm. So he's put together some offensive pieces. He's got some players in that line playing well. So, I mean, the Rams are really coming on here. They play the Giants next. I think they'll win that. It's a scary team. You, like, this is a team that you don't want to play against in the playoffs because they will make some noise. And honestly, like, this Rams team, I, we talked about it before. They're just such a young crowd. Yeah. And can they be a dynasty? I think this is the youngest team in the league right now. Yeah, because they, they they won a Super Bowl two years ago, and you're still they're still red hot. The and, only reason I don't think it can be in dynasty is because Stafford and Aaron Donald are at are on the bottom end of their career. Maybe McVay could have his own little dynasty with different players, but like I think that like they're over like I don't know because next year they could be a Super Bowl contender. Like right now yeah. they'll make noise, but they had a player or two. Next year they could be right back, right For back. Sure. They're gonna yeah. be a playoff team this year. And honestly, let's let's ask this question right now. They play the Eagles. I think they can beat the Eagles in the playoffs. I think they can beat them too. They play the sure. Cowboys. I think they can beat the Cowboys in the playoffs. They could definitely. That's beat what I'm some saying. Teams. This is like a kind of a weird team, you know? They're Very like, weird because they're not really talent. Like they are talented, but like you. Just, and then the 49ers, like they're kind of you know. And they've already up played them down. competitive. I think they were close in the beginning of the season against them. They only lost by a few points, like yes, a touchdown. Yes. So. I don't know. Can this they Rams sneak team. into the Super Bowl? They could literally just sneak into the <laughs> yeah. Super Bowl. I don't know if they'll go that far, but they could win a playoff game or even two. Maybe they could sneak into the NFC Championship game. But we'll go into the the NFC standings now. Right now, we got the Niners at one, uh, the one seed, eleven to four. Yeah. With the Lions in the second seed, eleven to four. Eagles third seed, eleven to four. So we got three eleven to four teams. Then we got the Bucks at the lead in the NFC South at the four seed, eight and seven. Then right now with the five seed, we got the Cowboys. The Cowboys and the Eagles could switch between the three and the five seed. We'll see. So the Cowboys. Cowboys are the fifth seed, ten and five. Then six and seven. This is what's going to come down to. We got the Rams at six with eight and seven. Seahawks at seven at eight and seven. And then you got the Vikings at eight, seven and eight. You got the Falcons at nine, seven and eight. Pa- Packers at ten, seven and eight. Saints at eleven, seven and eight. I think it's going to stay exactly how it is right now. I think the the exact standings, what the way it is right now: Niners one, Lions two, Eagles three, Bucks four, Cowboys five, Rams six, Seahawks seven. I think that's how it finishes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I have Eagles winning their division. I have Bucks winning their division. Um, I'm pretty sure Lions clinched their division. I'm yeah, pretty sure they did. That. They just did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So and 49ers definitely clinched their division. Yeah. So. Yeah, they're in the playoffs now. So too. yeah, it just comes down to that wild card. It's really in a mix of the Vikings, Vikings, Seahawks, Vikings, Seahawks Rams, and. Yeah. Falcons and Falcons Packers. All, yeah, yeah, Packers. I think are done now too. But yeah, I think the Packers are done. It's as getting well. tight now. But okay, that's really it for that. Now we'll get into we'll rapid fire through the rest of these games. We'll go first. Bills Chargers. I mean, the Chargers made it interesting. The Bills a little shaky, but finally Gabe Davis had a big day, big game, and they pulled it off at the end. Look, you get a win. It was a short week or whatever, and it. It is what it is. You it, know? Was, it was a game they needed to win. Yeah, like, and they, they won. to win out. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. This Chargers team kind of looks like they have like some life without some Staley. I think they were just they so happy. Staley, yeah, so. I think they were just so happy that Staley was going. like, let's go. They're all pumped up. Easton Stick looked a lot better. He did. But he's still, I don't think he's anything, you know, he's not Tommy DeVito, you know? No, no, he's not. <laughs> he's uh, not Tommy DeVito. I mean, it's nice that you have a nice little quarterback like that that can get it done. You know, you're not getting uh, Herbert back for the rest of the season. Yeah, so, so see what you got. Yeah, exactly. How did the Broncos lose to the Patriots? That was an interesting one. <laughs> I, uh, Broncos are the one team that I wouldn't be surprised, you know? that You know, g- give me any team that they play, they might lose against. There's two teams like that. The Falcons, the Broncos. <laughs> yeah. The Falcons can beat anyone, lose to anyone. Same with the Broncos, I feel like. Yeah, and yeah. And it was embarrassing. And I feel like Sean Payton generally 
does not like Russell Wilson. Like, just the faces he makes at them, he doesn't like. I feel like he's, I think uh, personality-wise, it doesn't work. No. I thought it worked, but I don't know. Does Sean Payton try to trade him? Like, I would keep him, but maybe he just doesn't like him. If he doesn't work with him, then he's not going to work in the organization. No, so. Straight up. It's it is what uh, it is. It's unfortunate. Like I can see Russell Wilson flourishing somewhere else. Yeah. Like he could be good. Like Atlanta. I keep bringing up Atlanta. Rams. You know. Rams. Once got, well, once Stafford. Stafford moves on. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe I wouldn't say Patriots. That's that would that would be stupid. Um. What's another team that would need a quarterback right now? I mean, really, I think Atlanta. Falcons? Atlanta. That's what yeah. I keep saying. Atlanta. That's. I feel like Justin Field or, or Russell Wilson is probably going to Atlanta. Yeah. And then Daniel Jones is the sitting. No, I'm kidding. Daniel Jones is staying right now. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for bringing that up. We'll go Commanders Jets now. And uh, Woody Johnson earlier in the week said that Robert Saul and Joe Douglas would be coming back next season. And the Jets come out firing in all cylinders. You know, they get out to a huge lead, almost blow it, but they almost barely blow it. Bla- barely that hold it. Do you want to know what was the biggest mistake? Is that Ron Rivera didn't go to Jacoby Brissett sooner because Sam Howell has been awful. And Jacoby Brissett again, second week in the row, came right in. The offense looked completely different. Almost came back and won. Jets hold on. Whew. But Ron Rivera probably his last season. Sam Howell, I thought he was a pretty good quarterback. He's falling apart. Yeah. Falling apart. I don't even know if you give him another season now because this is new ownership. They didn't draft him. They're probably not going to want to roll with no, him again. Definitely so not. Maybe they the, way, get the way he's been performing. Russell Wilson to the to the commanders, maybe? That can be possible. And Be- I've heard Belichick's name thrown around there too, because they're gonna need really? a new head coach. So Belichick and Russell Wilson. Now, nah, I don't know if those two those two if Peyton and Russell Wilson don't fit, Belichick's not gonna fit with no. Mr. I don't Mr. Know. I, I like Belichick right over in the Chargers. Yeah, yeah, you've that, been bringing that, that up. Nice. I feel I still feel like Chargers should go with an offensive guy, but I I think a lot of people have been saying that that's the best. Just spot let the for offense the do what they do. You Keep know? Kellen Moore and just get, yeah. bring on Belichick, and yeah, that could work. That could work. Let's go Packers Panthers and. Uh, Pat, you know, Bryce Young has improved. He's looked a little better the last couple of weeks. The Packers get the dub. It was close. It was a little interesting. To make this game close, though, honestly. The Packers defense the- has not been good lately. I mean, they the last couple of weeks has been kind of awful. They have had some injuries, so yeah. I will give them that. But they've been calling for the, the defense according to his head. I think it's Joe Barry, I think his name is. I don't really? think they've been calling for his head, yeah. Wow. So the last couple of weeks have been rough for them. I think that they're going to be out of the playoffs now. But they have a young team, the Packers. High scoring. High scoring I will say that. It was high scoring. Seahawks, Titans, uh, again, Seahawks barely pulled this out. Barely pulled it out. And Ryan Tannehill came back in. Will Levis got hurt. And that's what it's all about. No, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know what to say <laughs> yeah, about that. Yeah, when one. I saw Ryan Tannehill out there, I'm like, oh, God, this is going to be a crap fest, huh? Yeah, well, I, I I was confused at what Levis got benched. And I'm like, why would they even bench him? Like, you're not playing for much. We all know Tannehill's shot. But no, it was injury. But T- Tannehill is shot. It doesn't matter. They're eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So. And Seahawks are just holding on. But right, for dear right, life. But right now they got the seven seed. You think they're out? I think they're in. I think they're out. Moving on, Colts, Falcons, and the Falcons beat the Colts. That surprised me a little bit. The Falcons are very weird, man. They, they are very weird. Every time I pick against them, they win, and if I pick them, they lose. It's just weird. And oh, Heineke, I will say that Heineke did look better than Ritter, and I've been saying that the offense looked a lot more efficient this week. You know, you had Kyle Pitts making big plays. Uh, Bijan Robinson had some nice plays. Algier had a nice touchdown. Like this offense they looked a lot better. A nice offense, but they just can't put it together. I know because they need the quarterback and Ritter. Like will make plays but throws stupid picks. But Heineke looked good this game. He looked decent. So maybe that's why you want. Maybe is that why you wanted the Falcons and you saw Heineke and you're like, my guy Heineke. <laughs> or I don't know. Maybe well, thought, I like Heineke. He was on the Commanders. I know, and they they beat the Giants a couple times. Then they tied you, which is the weird one. But yes. <laughs> Cardinals at Bears, and I was actually a little shocked that like the Bears. I feel like when they have a game. That they're supposed to win, they usually lose. But they 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 played good in this game. They put they, they held on nicely, and the defense actually has Im- improved the last couple of weeks. They have yeah. only left sixteen points. I mean, listen, the Bears aren't really that bad of a team. They're not. They really uh, stepped up. Apparently, like there's like a one percent chance they can make the playoffs. They're, 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 I don't think they make the playoffs, but, but the fact they're, that they, they're making a good run. They were like zero and four or something, one and five, and the fact that they've actually brought themselves kind of back into relevancy a little bit, like I think that means that means they've won like four out of their last like. Nine, four of the last eight or nine. They've been better, like four out of the last eight or nine. And so they've yeah, been like they went on a real cold streak. Yeah, and then they've been about five hundred since then. So they've been a lot better. But they you have. know, they do have big decisions coming up in the off season. We've talked about this. We'll get more into it in the off season. Now this is more about the playoff teams. So yes. let's move on. Giants, Eagles. Uh, look, the Eagles have been shaky. The Giants barely held on. Uh, Devito you, got you benched. Mean the Eagles barely he- held on. The, I'm the, sorry. The Eagles barely held yes, on. Yes, because this is this is. The, the whole thing. I'm worried about the Eagles 
just from this game alone. You know, you you let up 14 points, let the the Giants come back on you and almost give it up. Defense, and, that and defense is good. There. Yeah, I just don't know what to to do with this team. It's you know, they're. Their offense is everything you want, and their defense is everything you don't. Yeah, and, and then even the offense uh, uh, disappoints sometimes too. Like the picks, like you you have a, a like a sound lead, everything's fine. Then Jalen Hurts stupid pick six, like he has just been a little off. The, the turnovers this season, Jalen Hurts has been kind of stupid. The week before too, he was like, like chucking it up, throwing interceptions in the double yeah. coverage. He's been kind of weird this season. Yeah, is it that or is it the play call? Yeah. Same time, the coordinator's you know? gone. I've been saying that's a combination of both, probably. But yeah, that's what happens when you lose both of your coordinators. That's what happens when you're good. You lose both your coordinators. Usually, there's some slight regression. Jalen mm-hmm. Hurts had an MVP type season next. I mean, last season, the odds of him replicating that was very low. So we kind of knew there was gonna be some slight pullback. Yeah. They're still look. They finished fourteen and three last season. This season, they're probably gonna finish thirteen and four. So did they really regress? Yes, they did. But it's like we're making this a bigger deal than this. Is is this their year to win the Super Bowl? Probably not. But you know, it's hard to go back to the Super Bowl two years in a row. You know, yes. it, it's not easy. Look at the Bengals. Like they went back one year. We thought they were gonna go back every year, and they haven't been. So you're not it, the Chiefs. Not everyone's the Chiefs. And even the Chiefs now are struggling. So it yeah, just shows. Exactly. Just goes to show. So I went ten and six. You went nine and seven. I got one game on you. But you still have one game on me total. I, I had picked two games on you. Yeah, so I picked week. up one yes. on you is what I meant. So I'm 143-97. You're 144-96. We got two weeks left, and it's really coming down to the wire. Every game we pick now is going to be critical mm-hmm. to who wins this. I don't even know what the prize is going to be. I guess it's bragging rights at that point. Yeah, bragging rights. It's, it's, it's funny how we've kind of been playing. It's funny how we've kind of been playing like an all season long game, and now we're finally coming to the end of it. So it's yeah. kind of like now I'm kind of getting starting to get a little critical. I mean, my end picks. of regular season is the end of it. I yeah. don't count playoffs. No, we're not going to do play. Maybe we'll do. I mean, a, a, I'll predict the playoff. Maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do a separate playoff thing, but the, yeah, we'll end it here. But then we'll yeah. do like a separate playoff record thing, yeah, maybe. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. Okay, we'll do the week seventeen games, and first and foremost, we'll start with Jets Browns Thursday night football. Who do you got? Are you getting your Jets? Nah, man. No, nah, I'm not man. going Jets. Are you kidding me? Against this 10 5 Browns with Joe Flacco? <laughs> Give Joe me Fla- a revenge game, man. I know. Joe well, Flacco's that's the thing. Joe, in. that's the thing. Last year, the Jets, you know, without an offensive line, if there was no protection, Joe Flacco would not look this good. You need to protect him. He can't run. He never could run. I mean, when he was younger, he can move a little bit, but he needs protection. He has a good arm. He's getting it with the Browns. Give me Browns on yeah. this one. So, like, for. In order to have a good quarterback, he has to be mobile and he has to have a good arm. The only exception you have is if they have a good line. And yes. they have an amazing line, so he has a great arm. So they just make it work. I I, I can't really say much about Joe Flacco. I, we only saw him like four or five games. But he's just been showing out. And you, have a, you kind of have a challenge here. You're going up against a good secondary. So I don't know. Um, if Jets keep this close, I'll be very impressed by their defense. But I feel like it's just going to be one of those games, you know. Um, they're just going to get worn out, and Joe the Black defense. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, um, you know they're going up against the best defense in the league, so I don't know. It's gonna be tough. <laughs> I don't know. This is going to be interesting. Is Trevor Simeon gonna? Make any noise in this game? Well, Zach back from the concussion. It'll probably be Simmons. It's a short I, week. I think it's going to be it's short week. Okay, let's move on. Saturday game. We got Lions Cowboys. We've actually been talking about this game all year, and we didn't even know it. We brought up multiple times. Who would you take Lions Cowboys? Because we thought they were so yes. close. We're finally here. Who do you we got? We are here. Hey, who do you think? Who I've been saying all year? We've been well, saying Lions, but we've switched sure. to Cowboys, and we went we back. <laughs> we went back. I'm going to go Cowboys. Oh, okay, it's here close, but. I don't know. Just something about the Lions against good teams. Same with the Cowboys, though. Don't get me wrong. But I'll give the slight ass to the Cowboys because I think the Cowboys have a better defense. And the Lions have a better run game. Don't get me wrong. But I think Cowboys have slightly more weapons on offense. You know, Mm -hmm. CeeDee Lamb and Ferguson and Cooks and... Compared to the Lions, they got St. Brown, they got Laporta, and Jameson Williams has been coming on a little bit. And they got those two good running backs. Josh but I feel like, Reynolds is yeah, still coming on. Right, right. And they have a great offensive line, but I feel like Dallas can still get pressure. And if they get pressure in this game, Goff will slightly struggle. Goff will have a good game, but I think they'll get the Goff enough to where it throws him a little off, and then Dallas's offense can control the game. So I'll take Dallas here. And a slight yeah, close game. Yeah, of course. If the Cowboys came into this game destroying the Dolphins, I'd be like, okay, maybe I'd go with the Cowboys. But listen, they weren't even able to pressure Tua. Yeah, no, I think it was only one sack the whole game or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So that alone, you know, I think the Lions will control this game. 
Gotcha, gotcha, right, gotcha. Down their throats. So that's a big game. There's other. This other one is going to There's be a big lot, game. lot of big games. Yeah, this week. there is. So actually, we'll get into that one in a second. Actually, no, we'll get into that now. Dolphins, Ravens. Who do you got? Whew, that one's a Ravens are home. You know, I, I got the Ravens one here. It's not a convincing win though. This is a big game for the Dolphins. If they can come in and win this game, they might. This might be the AFC Championship. I agree. I think I don't. If the, I think if the Ravens lose, I wouldn't take too much from it, but. For the Dolphins side, I would take a lot from it. The Dolphins, this would be a huge win for them. Back to back, the big wins. But ones, yeah. I'll take the Ravens here. I think the Ravens are the better team. Lamar's the better quarterback. Harbaugh is the better coach. I'll take Ravens in a yeah. close one. I think the Dolphins keep it interesting, but yeah, and their defense has been impressive lately. The Dolphins' defense it's definitely going to be an interesting. Game. It will for uh, but, sure. You know, Ravens might be the best team in the league right now. So. Probably are. So AFC South. Showdown. We got Titans at Texans. The Texans are fighting for a playoffs. We both think the Texans make it. Mm-hmm. So I think we both think the Texans win. Yeah, here. I think the Texans win this. Okay. I mean, I don't know. It's weird because when you have teams that are eliminated, they kind of like play good for no reason. You know? Yes, yes, because they, they want to play spoiler. It does yes. happen. Yes, yes, it so, does happen. So the Titans also have a great. You know, I always talk about how good of a head coach Mike Vrabel is. They'll probably keep it interesting. But yeah. we'll both take the Texans here. It's, I think Stroud's going to come back now. Yeah, we'll take the Texans. I mean, maybe. If, okay, just. We'll note this right now because he's already missed two weeks. If Stroud doesn't play, who will we take? I think Stroud plays, but I think that he plays. But even if without him, I, I, feel, think, I think I'll coaching go keep, staff. Coaching staff is going to. I'll go Texans too. I'll you go know? Texans too. So divisional too. So. Yeah, I agree. Falcons, Bears, Bears are home. I'll go Bears here. I, I haven't liked the Falcons. I did like the way they played last week, mm-hmm. but it seems like every. I'm going to go the opposite of my first instinct. My first instinct is to take the Falcons here. I'm going to go Bears because the Bears have actually been playing good too. Interesting. Lately. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> high on the Bears too. You know, they they've been playing pretty well. They have. Um, the defense has been better. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, nothing really else to get into. Yeah, there. that's really I, it. I, I just like the Bears better than the Falcons <laughs> yeah, at this point. Yeah. Me too. Um. Well, like I said, first instinct is like okay, maybe Falcons, but that makes makes me really think deep down. Okay, then that means the Falcons are going to choke here. So. I'll go Bears. Saints at Bucks, an NFC South showdown. I'll go Bucks. The Bucks controlled the Saints last time they played. I think mm-hmm. they completely dominated them. Yeah. And I'll go Bucks. I'm gonna go Bucks here too. Okay. Uh, I mean they're just on fire recently. They are. And I think Four straight wins. Yeah. So Bucks there for both of us. So Patriots at Bills. Uh, who do you got? The Patriots did beat them last time. Don't forget about that. Yeah. I don't know. Patriots are just that weird team that could beat good teams sometimes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They beat the Broncos. Belichick. This week. Yeah. yeah. They beat the Broncos. They beat the uh, who did they beat a couple of weeks ago? The uh, Steelers. The Steelers. Well, those are Trubisky, but still, the Steelers are good. You know, good defense. Yeah. So for sure. I'll still go Bills here though. I mean, like the four wins that they have, it's weird. They're like a four and eleven team. The four yeah. wins they have are like they beat the good Jets. Teams. Yeah, the yeah. Jets aren't bad. They almost beat the Eagles. Yeah, they had a couple of close. They, uh, I, I, I just it, it, it just yeah. comes down to good coaching staff. Pretty you know? much, pretty and much. I think, I think it's Bill Belichick making a case for him to play on another team. That's and what that, I think. He's, he's I think right now he's uh, that's what he's doing. He's trying to show his resume right now. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and it's showing. So uh, who you got? And that'd be really interesting to beat a divisional team. I, I'm going Bills here, but I, I don't know. I want to see Patriots. You know, I don't know. Bills just don't really win games in fashion. You know, they they tend to, um, you know, not really. Well, yeah, look at that Chargers game last week. They exactly. barely They barely beat them. So. so, and they're on a winning streak right now, and they have to win out. So, I don't know. Let's see if Patriots to spoil that. We'll see. We will see. Cardinals at Eagles. Cardinals at Eagles. I got I got Eagles here. Yeah, right Eagles now. need to bounce back. You know, they they've been kind of shaky. I think they win this convincingly. Let's move on. Yeah, the Eagles are a bigger bird and the Cardinals <laughs> are a nice little small bird. Panthers at Jaguars. Um I'll go Jaguars here. They got to bounce back. They have to bounce back. I mean, listen. Panthers, I think though no, they they won that last game um the Falcons to the Falcons a couple weeks ago, yeah. And then they, they played almost a close beat the game Packers. To the Packers. Yeah. And now they got a, a winnable Jaguars game. Team that this uh, arguably a winnable game. Yes. Yes. So, so who I do you got? I, I got the Jaguars here, but they need to step it up. They need to show some sort of life and win this game. I think that to blow them out for anyone to have confidence and yes. get moving forward. And then Trevor Lawrence needs to have a great and it's game. It's weird because they're still in contention to make the playoffs. So. But they I mean, should win the division. A team. They should win the division. They have to. Well, they yeah. don't have to, but they should. They better. <laughs> so I don't know. They got. They got to start making steps in the right direction. There's here. a possibility if they don't win the, their division, they could miss the wild card too. It's it's possible. Imagine they completely miss the playoffs. How much of a disaster that would well, be. Listen, I I have the Texans winning the division. So yeah. So they, you have the Jaguars at the seven seed. There's a possibility yes. where another team slips in there though. Exactly. Yeah. So you don't know what's gonna. Could happen. be a disaster brewing, but mm-hmm. we'll see. We got Raiders at Colts. 
I'll actually go Raiders here. I like the way the Raiders have been playing. The Colts are kind of up and down. Give me Raiders. I'm going with you in a day or two. Wow, I actually thought we'd be different on this one. Damn it. No, no. <laughs> I don't, the Raiders have been playing a phenomenal game, you know. Um, ever since they got rid of their coach yeah. and they, this, um, this Pierce guy Antonio came Pierce, in, yeah. yeah. I've heard they've been having great second half games. And you know what they do during the, the halftime? They, they're out there doing stretches, doing cardio, getting them staying loose. Uh, he just has. He goes. That's about smart. Things. Yeah. Instead of going to the locker room, sitting around, yeah. getting 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 cold. That's yeah. actually smart. It is. Smart. Yeah. Uh, he, he's he's just a different type of coach. He's got the potential to be a good head coach moving forward. He, yeah, I think he's definitely making a case to be the to head coach next, next year. And yeah. they had that similar situation with the special teams guy a few years ago when Gruden got fired and he led them to the playoffs. And then he fired. He decided to go with uh, McDaniel's. Josh McDaniels, and it ended up being the wrong decision. Mm-hmm. He has a chance to redo redo fate and do it the right way. Stick with the guy that you're winning with. Mm-hmm. So let's see if they do that. Rams at Giants. I'll go Rams here. I mean, Giants just aren't that good, to be honest. And Rams are on a roll here, and the Rams are going to make the playoffs. So let's yeah. go Rams. Rams are just a better team. Yeah. I mean, overall, they're... Better quarterback, yeah, better, better coach. Quarterback. Even though I like Dable. Better yeah. McVay's a genius. The, the only thing they're lacking in a bit is their secondary. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Ever since they got rid of Ramsey. I don't know why they really got rid of Ramsey. I think they thought Ramsey was on the decline. They weren't going to a Super Bowl anyway. Let's get a draft pick for them. I think they were just trying to get younger. That makes sense. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like in this draft, they got to pick up some sort of... They did did last draft. They had a couple good fifth round picks. They have like they have a couple Puka Naku is a fifth round pick. I'm pretty sure they got someone in the secondary is a fifth round I mean, pick. I mean like yeah on their secondary. Yeah, they no, they are lacking a little bit in the secondary. I will but give you that. Their line does make up for it. It so does. That, that's what you get the the benefits. When Aaron Donald that. has not been as good this season though, but he's still a solid player. But yeah. he's still good. He's still a top player. Don't get me wrong. But Rams are going to the playoffs. And I don't they're know. It's game. weird because I feel like Lyman could like last longer. Yeah, sometimes. It is weird because like a running back will be dead in, in like five years, but linemen somehow like they, they play long like careers, which is and weird. And it's, it's weird too because like you'll have a lineman like – They'll tend to go off in their like seventh or eighth year. That's when they start to come. Sometimes, out. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Especially I mean, the offense. It's all about development, like you know, hitting the right areas, doing the right. Well, moves. I think for a line, it's experience, is seeing exactly seeing what the right holes, what works, what doesn't. It's a little different. Running backs kind of see hole, run through yeah. hole. So. You got a good point. There's a there. lot more like football IQ. Yeah, the line. and 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 trial and error and stuff like yeah. that. It's a good point there. 49ers at Commanders. I'll go 49ers. The Commanders are kind of just on a terrible streak here. Yeah, I think Commanders have the worst defense in the league. To be honest with you, their defense they, is Swiss they do. cheese. They do. Especially their secondary. I'm so I'll go sure Niners. They're ranked the worst. Yeah, so I'll go Niners. Yeah, Niners here. Nothing really to get nope. into here. Let's move on. So Steelers at Seahawks. This could be close, but I'll go Seahawks here. I'll go Seahawks. I think Seahawks make the playoffs, and I think they win their last two, including this game. Give me Seahawks. Well, I I completely agree with you. I think the Seahawks are going to win this game too. Um, but at the same time, Steelers could come in. You know, they're coming off of a hot win. Um, I'm not sure what well, Rudolph is going to continue playing, right? Uh, well, I think Pickett might come back this week, but regardless, I think the Seahawks would still win. In my opinion, I still got Seahawks. I don't know about you. It's going to be a challenging game against a really good defense, but you know, it'll be a good. Good test for them, you know? Well, yeah, they're going to have tough defenses in the playoffs. Uh, the Niners, the Cowboys, uh, the well, the Lions defense is terrible. What am I saying? <laughs> but anyway, the Bucks defense is good. But anyway, I yeah, Seahawks are the better team. I think Seno Smith's a better quarterback than anything the Steelers have. And then the Seahawks keep rolling, so give me Seattle. Bengals at Chiefs. Actually, I thought this was like a tough game to pick, to be honest. And uh, I don't know. After the Bengals last game, they kind of were awful. But the Chiefs have been awful also. I'll go Chiefs here. Just give me. I, I can't go against Mahomes in a, it's such a close game like this. I think it come, when the, in a game that is like this close of opinion, I'll go with the quarterback. So I'll go Chiefs here. Completely understand that. I don't know. I feel like this game, everything's kind of gonna fall apart for the Chiefs. Good. You know, um, the Bengals. Their defense isn't terrible, so I think they're gonna be holding up. A, they're gonna be putting up a good fight. You know. Um, Browning didn't have an amazing game. No, it was his struggle, and they yeah. got blown out. So yeah. I mean, so I think that kind of brought him back to earth. And yeah. I think this will be a good game for him. Well, yeah, usually like you would talk about usually you have a bad week, you bounce back. But the Chiefs also had a bad week, and the Chiefs are looking to – the Chiefs have been getting talked badly about a lot. So I think Mahomes comes out fired up. And I mean, it's never been about Mahomes, though. No, I know it's not. I, that's a good point. I know, but I think maybe Jake Browning hit his wall. We'll see this week. Maybe that was his. Maybe that that was the best he's gonna get for Jake Browning. We'll see though. Interesting. We'll see. Chargers at Broncos. I don't know. I just think that Easton Stick game. Uh, look, I just don't think the Chargers are good enough right now with Easton Stick. I'll take Broncos, even though it might be close. 
Listen, I think they're going to keep rolling. They they played a really good game this week. Even though they lost, they put up a really good fight. And uh, honestly, you know, I feel like it's really all comes down to coaching. Um, you know, you saw you see the Raiders. You see how they got rid of the they got rid of their coach, and they're kind of starting to flourish with um, with, with Pierce. And, yeah, with Pierce. So. I think it's a similar situation that's going on. Wow! Here. So you get the Chargers beating the Broncos. Yeah. If that happens, we're gonna see a screaming match on the sideline between Peyton and uh, Russ. Oh, for sure. I mean, listen, <laughs> it's gonna they, be funny to watch. They lost to the Patriots, so Chargers. I feel like have no, not a problem. Well, you got a point there for sure. All right, Sunday night football. There is no Monday night game this week, but we have a Sunday night game, and it's Packers Vikings an NFC North battle, and. I don't know. Just the Vikings. I, Nick Mullins just gives me anxiety watching him play. <laughs> just like every time I, he drops back to throw, gives me anxiety. I'm not going to lie. And Aaron Jones, you know, he's had a tough season. Ever since the first uh, week one, he had that big touchdown run and then got hurt mm-hmm. with the hamstring on that run. Hasn't been the same this year. Really came on last week. Finally looked like Aaron Jones again. Again, I think Aaron Jones is back. I think this offense is back. Now that Aaron Jones is back, give me the Packers. I, I don't know. Um, I, I think Vikings are just a better team overall. Um, Packers are just too young. They're still getting things together. Um, Vikings feel like, I feel like they're giving everything they got each game, you know. And Nick Mullins, yeah, he threw a few picks, but then again, he he was airing it out too. Yeah, you know, he, he that's kind of what you want to see in your quarterback to just like just let it go and. That's no, I'll thing. give him that. Like, like I like the aggressiveness. I don't always, I, I don't mind picks usually. And I like downfield throws. If you're gonna throw picks, throw touchdowns too. I always say that. But he always tends to do it in critical moments that costs the game. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's what it seems like with Nick Mullins. He kind of always tends to do it at the moment that like kills you the most. I, I've seen yeah. that with him a lot. But that's what happens when you're a backup. You know, he's a good backup. I'll give him that. I mean, he makes play. Who's better, him or Josh Dobbs? I don't. I would go with Dobbs. Like I don't know. Like I don't know. I saw a lot of good things from him in the, during this game. Mullins know? might be a better thrower down the field. I'll give him that. But the mobility to get more with Dobbs. I don't know. I don't know. I guess they see something I mean, we don't. Yeah, exactly. They yeah, they, they, mu- they must. They must. So that's must. Our, our week. <laughs> they, must. they must. That is our week seventeen picks. Let's go to Thursday night football parlay. And last week we had Saints, Rams, and neither of us won. <laughs> I, I, I came close. You I did. Came. You did. You had, and I we'll went get three and four. I went two for four. So I had the Rams minus four and a half. That hit. They won by eight. Kamara over 29 and a half receiving yards. That missed. He only got 16. That's what Dylan missed on. That lost his. And Matt Stafford under a touchdown and a half passing. He missed on that. And Puka Nakua over five and a half receptions. I hit in that. I think he got like seven or eight. So I went two for yeah, four. Yeah, Puka Nakua, man. Yeah, he's been coming Always on. Always take the over on him. Yeah. Uh, for me, I had Cooper Cup over five and a half receptions. He had six hit on that. They both hit, yeah. Let's yeah. go over with both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Either or. Uh, then I had Matt Matthew Stafford over a touchdown and a half. He had two hit on that. Then I had Rams minus three and a half. They had plus eight, so hit on that or minus eight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then I had Alvin Kamara under twenty over twenty nine and a half receiving yards. He had sixty. If I had the under, I would have hit. You have hit on yeah. that. So you were three for so, four, yeah. I was two for four. Okay. Right, so this week, this week Jets at Browns and Usually I don't bet my New York Jets. I just try to watch them win. But for the sake of this show and my love for the fans, I will make a bet on the New York Jets. And because they suck, so I don't really care anymore. <laughs> so uh, first and foremost, I'll go Brees Hall over 31 and a half receiving yards. I think that he's been coming on as a receiver the last couple of weeks. Trevor Simeon likes to get in the ball out of the backfield passing-wise. And I think they're going to need to do that because they're gonna. this Browns defense is going to be tough. They're going to cover down the field pretty uh, aggressively, and they're going to get to Trevor Simeon. So Trevor Simeon is going to try to get the ball off his hands quick, get it to Brees Hall out of the backfield. He'll get the over. Joe Flacco over 227.5 passing yards. I know the Jets have good corners, but I think that they're going to – look, they started the, – to have a leaky faucet the last couple of weeks, uh-huh. and I think they're going to get beat here a little bit. You know, like Amari Cooper put up ridiculous numbers. Najoku is a great tight end. Two twenty seven and a half is low for me, so I think he'll eat, he'll hit that no problem. Yeah, Amari yeah. Cooper over fifty seven and a half receiving yards. I mean, he had two sixty two last week, so I hope he gets this. And Cleveland Browns minus four and a half. I think they'll win by uh, at least a touchdown, in my opinion. So give me that. Interesting. What do you got? So I have Joe Flacco over a touchdown and a half. Um, I don't know. I feel like he's just going to be cooking up the the Jets. Defense. They're going to fall down quick. Yes, I think it's just going to get yeah. yeah I agree. Hard. <laughs> then, 
Listen, I, Kamara really hasn't been getting that many touchdowns. They usually get their touchdowns through the air. Yeah, so, so. that should be pretty easy. I have Trevor Simeon under uh, 173 and a half passing yards. So I guess he is playing, and even if he's not, this is definitely going to yeah, hit. Yeah. <laughs> so the um, Browns defense, yeah, yeah, their defense I, I is just their line is going to be destroying. The him only way it wouldn't hit is if they fall down so bad that they're just garbage time pass in the whole second half. But I don't even see that happening because the Browns. I think it's somewhat close for the first half, and then the Browns start to pull away. So yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, then I have Amari Cooper over 57 and a half receiving yards. Like me. He okay. had like triple that <laughs> last yeah. week. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> that was my, my exact logic for the same thing. Yeah, okay. exactly. So, I mean, they have a good secondary, but at the same time, it's going to fall apart eventually. And that's really his go-to. So let's go. Then I have Brees Hall over 46 and a half rushing yards. And listen, if they're going to make any sort of – Make any sort of moves. They got to run it with Brees. Brees they, has they to get, get the some sort of running game I going. Agree. So yeah, I'm sure he's going to get one or two breakaways. I can see that too. That, if they're, yeah, there. if they're going to win this game, Brees Hall's going to have to be heavily involved. He had, I think, he had over a hundred receiving yards and a hundred rushing yards last wow. week. So it could happen. With, it could happen. So for both. About, so hopefully that will. So repeating that, I have Brees Hall over 31 and a half receiving yards. Joe Flacco over 227 and a half passing yards. Amari Cooper over 57 and a half receiving yards. And Cleveland Browns minus four and a half. I have Joe Flacco over one and a half passing touchdowns. Trevor Simeon under 173 and a half passing yards. Amari Cooper over 57 and a half receiving yards. And Brees Hall over 46 and a half rushing yards. And that is our Thursday Night Football parlay. All right, Dylan, two weeks left. Let's get it. Playoffs come. Exciting. We got a bunch of content coming out. Like, subscribe, share. Thanks, man. See you next week.